120 days ago, I created an ecosystem using only things I found on Kijiji. Watch as a variety of creatures fight for the right to exist. Witness life, death, and unexplained mysteries. Join me, and together we'll watch an entire ecosystem unfold before our very eyes. And it all begins right here on Kijiji. If you're not familiar, Kijiji is a Canadian app that lets users buy, sell, and trade goods. And it's where I'll be sourcing all the plants, animals, hardscape, and technology for the ecosystem. And after weeks of scrolling, this free 25 gallon tank is my first find. It'll be perfect for creating the ecosystem. Then I bought this leaky bag of sand for $5 and filled the bottom of the tank with it. Next, I filled the aquarium with water. And finally, I got this light, which is a little big. I also managed to pick up this heater for $10. With the sand, light, and heater in place, that would be a wrap on day one. On day 10, I picked up three assorted bags of aquarium trimmings and quickly got to work. I also bought a bag of polysperma seeds for $5. and then a final clump of hornwort to finish it off. On day 30, a thick layer of biofilm had formed on the surface of the aquarium. It kind of reminds me of the night sky. And while I was looking at it, I noticed our first inhabitant. I quickly scooped him out to make way for our first permanent inhabitants. This guy wasted no time in zooming around to explore his new home. They're also incredibly small. Here's a slow zoom in to give you a sense of scale. There's six shrimp in this clip. Can you spot them all? While filming, I noticed this tiny white dot on one of the plants. It looks like a snail shell, but it's not moving, so I'm not really sure. Towards the end of the day, I found what looks like eggs attached to the glass. On day 35, everything was looking great, and all the plants were thriving. But then I noticed something terrible had happened. Our temporary visitor decided he was going to stay permanently. But where there was death, there was also new life. I found this weird worm climbing the glass. That white spot on the plant was a snail, and he's getting quite big. I think I'll call him Kevin. And it seems Kevin brought some tiny friends with him. On day 40, it was time for a population census. And the best way to do that is to offer some cucumber. <laughs> While the snails avoided the cucumber, I did get some good shrimp action. But there was one inhabitant that wasn't spotted by the population census. Day 50, the Asian beetle invasion. They were everywhere. What I thought was an isolated incident turned into a full-on invasion. The world spins, my friend, but not for you. This one had even learned to swim. I wasn't sure if their presence would crash the ecosystem, or if it would provide a self-replenishing source of food for some of the larger future inhabitants. It was time to add something big that would send everything into hiding. I got this used piece of wood for $15. You can see all the white biofilm on it. Pretty cool. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to place it, and I ended up with this. I also got this free java fern from the same guy and attached it to the wood. As you can see, the shrimp quickly took to it.
On day 61, I woke up to a murky, cloudy water. And noticed all the creatures were headed to the surface of the water. Usually, creatures hang out towards the top of the water when oxygen is low, but I'm not sure what could have happened to foul the water. Even the detritus worms came out of the substrate. This was serious. Kevin, our snail friend, was spotted near the surface. Together we pondered, what could have happened? Then I remembered yesterday, we put the old log in. As you can see, when I'm putting in the log, it's kicking up dirt, which is what I think caused the dirty water. While Kevin had made his way to the surface, where the water was still oxygenated, not everyone was so lucky. On day 70, the waters cleared, and new life emerged, and they were hungry. The boys only stopped eating to try and pick up girls. Endlers are some of my favorite fish, so I was very happy I could add them to the ecosystem. On day 80, I added some leaf litter, both as food for the microfauna and cover for our newest inhabitants. Everyone was eager to explore this new food source. The new additions to the ecosystem were acclimating in these bags, and the Endlers couldn't wait to meet their new roommates. Meet the Coolies and the Julies. In the bottom left is a Coolie Louch, and in the top right, a Julie Cory. The Coolies spent all their time zooming around the aquarium, and would quickly hide in the leaf litter whenever I tried to film. But after a long day of zooming, they got tuckered out and took a nap. These three cozied on up to the heater, where they fell asleep. Meanwhile, the Julies did nothing except sit around and be fat and lazy. This guy only moved to stop himself from falling over. In almost no time at all, the ecosystem had descended into total chaos as the fish competed for food. Meanwhile, the endlers would always heist the sinking pellets before they could reach the Julies or the Coolies. The fish even ganged up to beat up this poor snail for trying to take a bite of food. Order needed to be restored. 
as on day 100, the Endlers gave birth. And life as a small fish is dangerous, as predators lurk in every direction. If the babies were going to survive, they would need a protector, which is why on day 110, I added a ferocious beast. Meet Poseidon, the king of the ocean. He quickly takes in his new kingdom before setting off to investigate his subjects. First, he visits the snails to make sure they fall in line. Then, after a quick snack, Poseidon came to check me out to make sure I wasn't causing any problems. But his biggest challenge lies ahead, as the Endlers aren't willing to give up their control of the ecosystem without a fight. The two males cower in fear and leave the lone pregnant female to take on Poseidon. She sneaks up behind him and bites his butt. He seems unfazed, and the Endlers respected him from this day forward. Poseidon was also busy keeping a very close eye on the Coolie Loaches. This one passed his scrutiny, but this other one was being a punk. <laughs> Unacceptable. Here, you can see Poseidon protecting a Coolie Loach and his pellet from the thieving Endlers. With Poseidon's rule being enforced, peace was restored to the ecosystem, and all the creatures existed in pure harmony forevermore. <laughs>